Hi, it's Mr. T here. Um, this video, uh, we're going to go through uh, static electricity, uh, part of uh, the physics 2.6 standard. And uh, so we're going to go over the main points of that we need to know to uh, uh, succeed in the uh, exam at the end of the year. Okay, um, we look at talk about static electricity. The first thing we uh, need to know about is the electric charge. Um, an electric charge, a positive electric charge, is produced when an object has lost electrons. Um, and a negative electric charge is produced when there's a gain in electrons. So here's an example here if I had uh, a material, um, and here I've represented some uh, positive charge for maybe for protons and the negative charge for electrons here. The protons aren't going to move, but electrons generally can move um, from one atom to to another or from one substance to another. Um, if this uh, substance loses some electrons it now has more positive charges than negative charges and overall it becomes positive. Um, the opposite occurs as well. If it gains extra electrons then it now has more negative charges than positive charges and it becomes negative. So this is how we uh, come about and get a positive or negative charge. Um, the Coulomb. Okay, let's define what the Coulomb is. Coulomb is defined as, uh, um, well, let's talk. Uh, Coulomb is measured, uh, so it has the symbol C, um, and it's the measurement for charge. So a Coulomb is a specific amount of charge. So in this case, it's actually one Coulomb. Okay, so here, if we talk about a, a negative Coulomb, is equal to the charge of. 6.241 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So that's quite a lot of electrons because it's one coulomb. Notice that I've made this uh, a negative charge because electrons are negative. Um, electric charge can be positive or negative. Okay, so we can have a positive coulomb or a negative coulomb depending whether it's positive or negative charge. Let's have a look at an exercise here. I like it. a balloon has a charge of uh, negative 3.5 microcoulombs, how many electrons are there on the surface of the balloon? Well, a couple of things here, negative means this is, uh, uh, negative coulombs here means it's going to be a negative charge, and the micro here is a multiplier, and uh, micro means times 10 to the negative 6. So here the uh, actual number here is negative 3.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. So it's really important that I put these into uh, the uh, standard form before I do my calculations. Right, um, so this is uh, how many coulombs we have. We know that one coulomb is this many electrons. So um, what we want to do is work out, well, how many electrons does that fraction of a coulomb go? So what we do is we divide this number that we have by one to work out the fraction of coulombs we have and then multiply it by the number of electrons in one coulomb. So here we go. You get this number divided by one and multiply by the number of reflections. Oh, sorry, electrons. We get uh, 2.18 times 10 to the three electrons. Okay, another type of question they're going to ask here is: um, we've been given a certain number of electrons. What is its charge? So what we need to do here is um, work out uh, the fraction of electrons we have uh, compared to how many electrons there is in one coulomb and then we can work out um, how much of a coulomb it is. So I go um, 6.52 times 10 to 11 over how many electrons are in one coulomb and it gives us uh, 1.04 times 10 to negative 7 coulombs. I can change this number here to be 104 times 10 to negative 9 and then simplify it to 104 um, nano coulombs, nano being the uh, multiplier for 1 times 10 to negative 9. However, we're perfectly fine just to put the answer as 1.04 times 10 to negative 7. Okay, so make sure you're familiar with these, uh, both of these types of problems. Uh, how to change the uh, coulombs into a number of electrons. And you might have to do it if it was positive into how many protons. And a proton has the same charge as an electron, just opposite. And the, the other one we have to do here is if we're given a, a number of electrons, can we work out how many coulombs it is? Okay, uh, next part here, field lines. Field lines are really important. 
um, charges produce field lines and field lines go from a positive charge to a negative charge so we draw them um, from positive to negative this is really really important that you remember this um, so here if we've got a point charge um, they radiate out okay they radiate in all directions and go away from the positive and if we have a negative charge they all go towards the negative charge now um, in this topic we're um, particularly interested in what we call a uniform electric field and a uniform electric field is produced when we have two plates one plate that is charged negative one plate that is charged positive these plates are being charged up by an attached power source okay and um, we can work out uh, we have a couple of values that we use here we have the distance okay between well, let me just go over put the, the, the stuff on here so um, we have a value here um, where we can work out what, what the distance is between the two plates here it's uh, five millimeters um, there's a voltage that's produced to uh, separate the uh, negative and positive charge here they've used 12 volts and the voltage and the distance produce a resulting electric field now what's really important here um, and uh, I can't stress this enough that at any point in between these two plates the electric field is constant this is the reason why it's called a uniform electric field okay so no matter where it is whether it's closer to the negative electrode or closer to the positive they all experience the same electro, um, so the same electric field. Um, if we're outside the plate, it's a wee bit different, um, but we're not really going to go into that in detail, um, because you notice at the edge of the plate, once we are no longer in between them, the field starts to become radial, no longer uniform. Okay, electric field strength. So uh, one of the actual uh, calculations we're going to have to do is work out the strength of our electric field and the strength of our electric field E okay um, it's measured in uh, either volts uh, per meter or newtons per coulomb okay notice that using this uh, formula we have here we're going to have um, volts on the top and meters on the bottom so this is going to give us the unit volts per meter um, so one thing that's particularly important here is we can notice that uh, our electric field strength here is uh, inversely proportional to the distance. That means that if we make the distance smaller, then the electric field strength will get uh, larger okay, or stronger. Um, electric field strength is also proportional to the voltage. Okay? So if the two plates were the same distance and we uh, increased the potential difference or the voltage, we get a larger electric field strength. So increase the voltage, larger electric field strength. Okay, that kind of makes sense. If you move the plates further apart, then the electric field strength reduces because it's inversely proportional. Okay, um, here's an example of a couple of problems we might have here. Um, so we've got a diagram here of... Uh, uh, two plates, positive and negative plate, uniform electric field in between. Uh, we're given a distance of uh, four millimeters and a voltage of 15 volts. So um, what we want to do is work out electric field strength. So remember that electric field strength E equals our voltage divided by our distance. Um, notice here the distances are usually very, very small between the plates. So here four millimeters. Um, what we have to do every time is convert this distance into meters. So here I've done uh, the, the calculation here, put in our equations, substituted in the values. Notice I've uh, changed the millimeters into meters and I get this answer of uh, E equals uh, 3750 volts per meter. Um, notice as um, the significant figures, they're both this, uh, the given to two significant figures, so we're going to do our answer to two significant figures. Okay, let's look at another question. What is the distance between the two plates that produce a 2000 volts per meter electric field when 3.5 volts is supplied? So here, we're, all we're doing here is we're using the same equation again, 
we're given two values and we're going to solve for the third. So here we're given uh, E and V, so we're going to solve the distance. So um, I, I rearrange the equation for a start. Uh, you, you don't have to do it that way. You can place the values in and rearrange later. Uh, put the values in and work out the answer. Um, again, uh, the answer I get is 1.75 times 10 to negative 3 meters. Uh, I did two things when I gave my answer. I um, reduced it to two significant figures because here we have two significant figures and um, I put it into millimeters just to make it easier to read. Uh, the, uh, you could keep it in uh, times 10 to negative 3 meters, that would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, moving on. Um, third question here is uh, exactly the same thing again, uh, given two values, what is the voltage needed to produce an electric field strength of uh, 5200 volts per meter between two plates 6 millimeters apart. Um, so I'm putting my two unknow unknowns in and solving, sorry, putting my two values in and solving for the unknown. Um, and there I get 31 volts. Last one here is a describing question. So, um, in this case we're not solving a numerical value, but you are, uh, we are going to give some descriptions of uh, uh, what the answer is here. So, if a voltage applied to two plates is kept constant, what happens to electric field strength of the two plates are pulled further apart? So what we're saying here is um, voltage is constant, so we're going to have proportionality between electric field strength and distance. We remember previously um, our electric field strength was inversion, inversely proportional to distance. So um, if the distance was larger, okay, so here we go, if this distance is made larger, then obviously the electric field strength is going to get smaller. And this is because the voltage was constant, distance increases, electric field strength inversely proportional to the distance, so it decreases. Really, really important that you get comfortable using these if you want to be aiming for excellence marks um, in the standard. Um, note, it's perfectly fine just to put down um, bullet points and to, to clearly sort of state uh, how, how you deduced your answer. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to better work out is the force of a charge in an electric field. So, um, Here's, a, here's an electric field again, um, and a couple of charges here. Now, a positive charge has electric static force acting on it in the direction of the electric field. So this positive charge is going to go upwards, right? Because it's attracted to the negative electrode, and that is the same direction as the electric field. The negative charge. Um, if we look at it and, and we just uh, sort of use logic here, we know it's attracted to the positive and it's repulsed by the negative, so it's going to be forced downwards. Right? So it's attracted, it goes the opposite way to our field lines. This is the equation we use to work out uh, the force. Uh, so force measured in newtons, um, we have the electric field strength and we have the charge. So um, notice here that force is proportional to electric field strength, um, that is if you make the electric field strength large, our force is going to get larger if the charge stays the same. Also uh, the force is proportional to um, our charge, so if, we, if the electric field strength was constant but the charge changed, we made it larger, then we're going to get a larger force. Okay, and th that's kind of um, makes sense as well. Okay, so here's a couple of examples here. Um, first one, what is the force acting on a particle with a 9.23 nanocoulomb charge um, when it's placed between two plates with a uniform electric strength, 270 volts per metre? So um, here's a diagram of what's happening here. Um, you can see the force, as it's positive, is uh, acting in the direction of the field lines or towards a negative um, plate. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is uh, find my equation. So here it is, f equals e times q. Uh, substitute in my two values and then calculate my answer. Answer is, oh, just uh, one thing to note again, this was nanocoulombs, so I'll make sure I put the multiplier in times 10 to the negative 9. We get 2.54 times 10 to the negative 6. Um, 
2.5 for the right number of significant figures because I have the three significant figures for both my values uh, given in the question. Um, I can write the answer as 2.54 micro uh, newtons, but I also can keep it as it was. Okay, second type of question here. What is the strength of an electric field um, that applies a 24.5 micronewton force to a particle with a charge of 300 uh, nanocolumns? Notice there's no positive or negative in front of this one. Um, in the absence of a negative charge, we assume it's a positive charge. So here I've um, got a force. I've got a, um, a charge, so I'm going to substitute those into an equation. So what I usually do is rearrange the equation first. I'm solving for electric field strength, so E equals F over Q. Okay, so I, uh, I substituted my two values, F and Q. Um, notice here I've substituted them in and then I've put my multipliers in, micro, nano, and I've solved the, um, the problem here. So my electric field strength is 81.7. Um, again, three significant figures. Um, we can't tell whether this 300 is three significant figures or not, but we will assume it is in this question. Okay, um, third type of question we're gonna have here is basically uh, just the um, description type question here. So. You know, we're looking at proportionality statements. This um, one was quite uh, quite easy for most of the time. Our force is proportional to our charge. Our force is also proportional to electric field strength. So if we double electric field strength, we're going to double our force. Um, so the last line here, I've said um, the force is proportional to electric field strength, so it increases. Um, it must really be more specific if I wrote this again, and I would say that it doubled. Okay, um, change in potential energy. Okay, this is a uh, particular question they like to give uh, to sort out people who are going to uh, get an excellence question, I mean, or, or to achieve excellence in this paper. Um, so, uh, the important points here is that um, a charged particle, when it moves towards a similarly charged plate, uh, gains potential energy, or it, it does work, and it gains potential energy. Um, if it moves the other way, it loses potential energy, okay? Um, and the important thing is if it's going with, um, if it's a charged particle is moving towards an oppositely charged plate, its potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. And this is going to be important later uh, for assumptions we make in particular calculations. Here's the equation we're going to use. Um, okay, so these values, uh, apart from this one here, a change of potential energy, measured in joules, the other three we've met before, charge, distance, and electric field strength. So let's uh, have a look at the types of problems they ask. So the general type of problem here is uh, we want to find out what the change of potential energy is when 2.2 uh, nanocoulombs here, a uh, charged speck of dust, moves 2 millimeters from the positive plate to the negative plate. The plate generates an electric field strength of 1200 volts per, me uh, per meter. Okay, so what's happening here, if we look here, our charged particle is moving towards a negative plate. Um, it's going to be losing potential energy, and uh, if we think about it, it's got a force acting that way, it's going to be gaining kinetic energy. But what we want to do is find the change in potential energy. So we use the equation we just had change in potential energy equals our electric field strength times our charge um, and times our distance. Remembering again I've changed my nano to times 10 to negative 9. I've changed my distance to meters and I get an answer here of 5.28 times 10 to negative 9. Or when we look back at the uh, number of significant figures and our the smallest number of significant figures in one of our values there's only two, I'll change this to 5.3 um, nanojoule. Nano because it was times 10 to negative 9. You could just write 5.3 times 10 to negative 9 joules. Okay. Um, next question here um, continues on from this. Uh, so the same. Well, what is the speed of this particle when it reaches the negative plate? 
the mass of the speck of dust is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 grams. Okay, so um, what are they asking when they're asking you for the speed of this particle? What they're saying when they're talking about, wh whenever they ask for a speed or a velocity of a particle, when you've been doing a question on uniform uh, electric charge, uh, uniform sorry, uniform um, electric field stream, okay, or, or uniform plates, whenever they're doing a question on speed, what they're actually saying is that the kinetic energy is going to be related to our change in potential energy. So we're going to assume that at the negative plate, the spec's potential energy has been converted totally to kinetic energy. So we've changed the, poten the potential energy to kinetic. Therefore, the kinetic energy will um, be our previous answer, which is 5.3 times 10 to negative 9 joules. We're going to substitute this a EK value into the kinetic energy equation and solve for velocity. So let's have a look here. So here's our EK equation. EK equals half mv squared. Um, this is, uh, maybe you might remember this from uh, mechanics. So we're going to put our kinetic energy value in here, our mass in here, and solve for voltage. Oh, sorry, for velocity. So let me see. Um, I'm just going to rearrange the equation first here. There we go. And I get this. Um, Velocity equals the square root of 2ek over m. Um, if you're a bit unsure on how to do that, on how the rearrangements are happening here, then you can go back and uh, look at the video I have on the how to rearrange um, formulae. Okay, so I've got this uh, rearranged equation. I just substitute in my values and I get the answer 2.1 meters per second. Okay, remember um, when we see the speed and um, we're looking at uniform electric fields okay or electric field strength we know that we're going to use this ek equation and we're going to have to make the assumption that the ek equals the potential energy